Well, I'm so pleased to be joined by what I get to call one of my colleagues at CBS and Clark Kellogg, who really doesn't need any introduction. Clark is such a first class guy and has offered his time to be able to assist us in trying to make a difference for families like mine with Special Olympic athletes. So Clark, thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure, Debbie. Appreciate being a colleague of yours and have admired you for a long time and uh, certainly admire the work you're doing with Special Olympics and how you've approached that. And so glad to carve out some time to, to be with you. You and I go uh, back a ways and our connection through Ohio State uh, obviously is something that we're very proud of. I know you're proud of your affiliation and yeah. uh, we, we were together last October. It was a little bit more of a somber uh, event because it was um, at an event that uh, honored uh, the late Jim Jones, who was the guy who hired me at Ohio State. Yeah. Um, when you think about your connection through Ohio State and how it's been able to propel your career, what would you point to? Man, there's so much, Debbie. I'm a Cleveland native, grew up in the state in Northeastern Ohio, ended up coming to school down here in 1979 and detoured to the NBA in the early 80s. And we lived in Indianapolis from 84 until 93, but Columbus has been our home since. And the people, obviously the education, but it's the people, the fabric of the people, what Ohio State means to so many, not just in the state, but around the country and throughout the world. It's a huge land grant institution that has tentacles in just about every aspect of economic life in the state of Ohio and beyond. And so to have a chance to be part of that alumni base, to meet the people I've met through being an alumnus and also having played basketball there um, is beyond what I ever dreamed it would be. Um, people told me that it could be significant but at 17, 18, 19, when you're being recruited, you can't quite see the magnitude of the reach and impact and influence and the passion that people have for the institution. So uh, it was one of the greatest decisions I made in my life to come to school here. And Columbus is a great thriving, growing community. Um, so I owe an awful lot of my life's journey from Cleveland to Columbus um, to Ohio State quite honestly, and um, stay connected to the university in multitudes of way, in a multitude of ways. So uh, I'm forever indebted um, to Ohio State. I feel a similar uh, passion for the university. It was one of the initial places where I was able to start my career. And, and I do believe the, that the, uh, the organic six degrees of separation is about Ohio State and the people that have either <laughs> come in contact with the university, have worked there, have graduated from Ohio State. It's amazing to me how many connections through the Buckeyes there are, even down here in the South where I live in Charleston. Yeah. Uh, it's just Ohio State means so much to so many people. Um, Clark, uh, your basketball career is so storied, so legendary and iconic. You're a guy that people say Clark and they know exactly who you're talking about. Um, it, it's just so exceptional to be a part of that CBS team, especially during the NCAA tournament. Yeah. What do you love the most about being in the studio with the guys? I love everything about it. I love the preparation. I love the fun that we have, the mutual respect we share when you think about Seth and Wally, Seth Davis and Wally Zerbiak, and then obviously our Turner partners, Ernie Johnson, and Kenny Smith and Charles Barkley. Uh, that three week run to a championship is as special an event as there is. Um, in college basketball on both the men's and women's side. Mm -hmm. um, it never disappoints. There are always surprises. There's always great basketball being played and there's always typically a worthy champion crown. But I love the preparation. I love the camaraderie we get to share and not just with those of us that are on the air, but those that are part of the team behind the scenes, our producers and directors and graphic operators and highlight tape. Um, editors and all of the folks who uh, are energized and galvanized by that intensely busy and exciting um, three plus weeks. It's, um, it's a really cool, cool event to be part of with the people we get a chance to be part of it with. So I like all aspects of it, but the people and that um, shared excitement around a special event that we get the privilege of bringing to the millions is, um, is a special feeling. 
Oh, I feel the same way. I mean, it's a Super Bowl for me to be able to be on that team. And, and you mentioned um, energized and galvanized and the word team. And I think that's exactly a perfect way to portray what happens during those three weeks when everyone comes together to share these incredible stories of these great basketball teams. When you start thinking about team, Clark, what, what um, is probably... I know you've got some strong feelings about the word team and about how team plays out in your own life, but what would you say about what you've learned from being on a team? Well, I think one of the biggest things I've learned and continue to learn is that we need each other. We need other people to be our best. Whatever gifts God has given us and opportunities, they're only enhanced and expanded when we give ourselves to other people and allow others to give themselves to us. Uh, I read a book recently called People Fuel, and it talks about, John Townsend wrote it, and it talks about the various nutrients. I think there are 21 nutrients that we all need to receive, and we also need to be giving to other people in a 360 degree type of exchange. And uh, that's powerful. It really reinforces the essence of team. Team is recognizing that you're part of something that's bigger than you. You're an important part, you're a unique part, but it is a part and you wanna bring the best of yourself to that team environment, whether it's broadcasting, whether it's doing what you're doing with Special Olympics to, to raise funds and awareness um, for those um, physically challenged athletes. Um, team is about recognizing your role in the grand scheme of things and how people need what you can bring and you need what others can give you. And that reciprocal giving and taking and sharing is part of what makes teams so powerful in sports and corporations and families and communities. And so I think of it as just recognizing our, um, our need for one another to do the best, to do the most good that we can. We need to do things together. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here and why we wanted you on our team for this event, because this is so personal for our family because of, you know, obviously Frankie and, and what he's been able to accomplish. Yeah. We've never measured what he couldn't do. We've only looked at what he could do. And sport plays such an important role in that for us that we wanted to be able to do something to make a difference for other families like ours. When you start thinking about Special Olympics and some experiences that maybe you and your family had, what, what resonates with you about this cause? Man, I tell you, you know, when I was playing with the Pacers, I was actually the honorary chair for the state Special Olympic Games back in the early 80s in Terre Haute, Indiana, Indiana State University, and spent um, a, a night and a day in the opening ceremonies and participating with the hundreds of Special Olympic athletes and it just is an indelible memory um, on multiple levels, what the power of sport, what sport is able to do in influencing and impacting lives across all spectrums. And the, 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 the enthusiasm and the camaraderie that you experience through sports. And I got a chance to witness it with the Special Olympians um, in a real powerful, significant way. And to your point, it's a, the families and the athletes are seeking to do that which they can, not dwelling on what they don't have or can't do. Mm -hmm. And when you can provide an environment where that's a common theme and you get people together that are sharing in that experience with that perspective, it is, um, it is powerful to see the difference that can make in the, in the life of, of a Special Olympian, what that can mean for his or her self-esteem, for his or her growth and development, for the um, joy it can bring to the athletes and their families, and the um, benefit they gain with one another in that kind of space. It's just a really um, magical and powerful um, equation. So that's what I think about. Um, Athletes giving their best, which is part of what competition is. Um, uniquely challenged, but at the same time, competing, uh, experiencing the joy of competition, the opportunity to push themselves 
to their next limits. And that is um, life giving. Can I go ahead and sign you up for a global ambassador for Special Olympics <laughs> right now? Because I don't think I could have said it any better. Uh, well, I mean, I got a chance to experience Debbie. That's almost yeah. um, 40 years ago now. I mean, it was, I think it was 1984, if I recall correctly. And uh, it was still one of the most amazing events I'd ever been part of. I was in my early 20s at the time, but participated in the Olympic oath. Uh, danced with the athletes um, <laughs> at a part. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. And then actually part of my give back when I was a pacer was to invite different groups to games and that I would take care of their tickets. And then I would spend time meeting with them afterwards and special Olympians were a huge part of that. The community got behind providing 20 to 30 tickets um, each game. And a lot of times those would be special Olympic athletes. And I would have a chance to interact with them and their families um, after games and um, just to see the joy that um, competition and sports could bring to them was um, inspirational and unforgettable to me. So I, I applaud the work and um, know how much of a difference it makes in the lives of those athletes and their families. Clark, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your schedule to, to be with us and share your experiences of, of participating um, as a volunteer, as a co-chair, as a chairman, all the things that you've done to raise the profile and create awareness for Special Olympic athletes, because you're right, they do need time to compete and train and they need people to help them. And it takes yes. money to do that. And it, it requires some effort, um, but it is very rewarding. Um, you know, my coach used to talk about awards versus rewards and um, Special Olympics is definitely something that you will be rewarded if you put your time in it. No doubt. No doubt. I can echo that full heartedly. Thank you, Clark. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Great. Good luck with the event. I know it's going to be great again, as it always is, and um, appreciate all that you do um, as a broadcaster, but just as importantly in making a difference in the community. I love being on your team, man. Thank you. Likewise. Great to be teammates.